everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is just a little bit different because I'm gonna be sharing 10 popular products or items that I personally don't think is worth the money and what I prefer to buy instead. So this is just different because if you know my channel at all, I'm often buying things and recommending things that I really love. Um, it's kind of just a place where you can go and, and see new things, new clothing pieces and different price points. I, I, I really try to vary my channel at all the different price points because that's really what I like to do in my real life. Um, but what you don't see is a lot of stuff that I just do not like. Um, I really like my channel to be positive and so I don't like to get on here and say, I hated this, this sucked and I just don't really talk about that stuff. But because of that, sometimes it worries me that it comes across that I just love everything and I'll just recommend everything and that's not true either. So I put together this list of things that I just don't really think is worth the money and what I prefer to buy instead. And I'm sure some of these items you might really love and that's fine. I'm sure I'll get some comments saying, I love this and that's amazing. But this is just my perspective and my opinion. So without, Further ado and prefacing and explaining, let's get started with the very first item. It's coming out. Oh, it's going. It, it was coming our way, but it's this. It's the iRobot, <laughs> the good old Roomba. Uh, there's many of them out there. There's a shark version, there's Samsung, there's like D-Bot. Uh, there's so many. I've actually had I think by now I've tried three different versions. This is my latest one. I had one at the old house. I think it was also an iRobot. And then my mom has one and I've, I've kind of had experience with that one too. Um, I'm sorry guys, I really do not like these. We still have this one. It just sits there in the corner. It's very rare that I actually run it because it annoys me that it will be, it's so loud. You can schedule it. It's cool that you can kind of like schedule it to just do a quick run of, of your house. But the thing is, it just misses a lot, okay? It's gonna say that it, 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 it has sensors and it, it picks things up, no. At least all of the ones I've tried, I constantly have to go around with my regular vacuum and then pick up everything that it has missed. And again, it's just so loud and it kind of like, I, I, we'll be having a conversation then all of a sudden it's like and it just, it's interrupting and I'm sorry. So anyway, I personally think just a good old vacuum does the trick. Oh, and I feel like some people might ask me what vacuum I recommend. And I've had Dyson, like the very, oh, it was expensive Dyson vacuum. And that was a fail. I've had Shark and that one was okay, but it died. The one that is still going strong and it is the cheapest of them all is a good old Bissell vacuum. I will link it down below. It's been great. The next thing that I really want to talk about involves knives, like cutting knives. That, that was a little scary. I've had a lot of experience with knives. That also sounds scary. What I mean is uh, in the kitchen, when we first were married 11 years ago, we were gifted the beloved infomercial classic, the five star, like thousands of reviews of people just obsessing over the Miracle Blade knife set, okay? No, awful, terrible. I suffered through it for years and years and years really out of laziness. Um, but in, finally this year, <laughs> I was a big girl and I purchased a new knife set. Let me just get back to the Miracle Blade. So many people love that knife set and while the price is pretty good, they are awful knives. So I'm totally going against that popular opinion. Um, I'm not saying you need to spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on knives, uh, but it makes your life a lot easier when they actually work. So uh, this year I did end up ordering this. It's actually from Walmart. They are by Cuisine Art and they are so beautiful because they're white so they look really great in my kitchen it's just really stylish but the knives <laughs> they actually work really well so I, I definitely recommend this um, and it also comes with a knife sharpener uh, so you can really get them good lots of different uh, like knife knives and scissors and yeah it's just a great knife set but what I'm really trying to say is don't waste your money on the Miracle Blade. I think first I'm just gonna get through the home things and then I'll move into fashion and beauty. But the next thing that I've kind of learned through the years is that you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars on bath towels. Uh, again, when I was first married, I registered for the really thick, plush, soft towels from Bed Bath & Beyond that were like $100 per towel and that didn't pan out so well. They have now, Ugh, they're, they're ripped and they're just awful. Like they're not great towels and they were annoying to dry. They were too thick and heavy and 
I just much prefer, uh, these are from Kohl's. I also have some from Target that are great. I have some from Walmart really good. Um, so I'll link some favorites down below, but these are nice and soft and they're not too thick. Like they're definitely like thick. They're not really thin, um, but they're just, they're just easy and they've held up amazing. So yeah, no need to spend hundreds of dollars per towel. Comforters. Oh my gosh. Why are they so expensive? And difficult. Like I, I've had so much experience with this too. I, I've ordered and tried out like the big box sets that everything comes matchy matchy. I feel like the quality is not that great. I've also tried really, really expensive down comforters. I'm talking like hundreds and hundreds of dollars for these down comforters. I've also ordered the anthropology one. Like everybody raved about the anthropology comforters and I, I didn't even think it, I didn't think it was that great at all. Definitely not worth the, the price point, but I have since guys, I have found one that I really love. My husband loves you guys. At least if you follow me on Instagram, um, you may have seen it because I recently shared it because you could, you, people were noticing it in the background of some of my photos. Um, so anyway, it's from Overstock. It's like $120. I feel like the price point is really good. It's called the coma inducing comforter. And it really is that like, it's so warm and cozy, but so beautiful. And I've had it for many months at this point and it's held up great, but it's only like $120, which I, I granted, like that's like, it's a chunk of change for sure. Um, but if, even if it only lasts me a few years, I feel like I could just buy it again and I would be fine with that. I, I just finally found one that it, it really looks beautiful and I enjoy getting into my bed every single night. Finally. So this next one is kind of a weird one to bring up for this video, but there's a popular opinion on two different sides of the spectrum and it has to do with furniture. So I just wanted to share my opinion on furniture and what I think is worth the money and what I don't. So in my home, I, I will try to insert some clips of kind of like what my living room looks like and my kitchen and different areas. I have decided to furnish my home in pieces that aren't probably going to last me for the rest of my entire life. And that is just because I want my home to be kind of in style. And I know that this light wash TV stand and the country kitchen table set that probably, I, these, these things aren't gonna be in style in like five or 10 years, you know what I mean? Um, I obviously wanna get the most use out of them as I can, but if in 10 years, I wanna kinda change up the look of my home, I don't wanna have thousands upon thousands upon thousands invested into these solid generational pieces. Like, do you know what I'm trying to say? So if that is your thing where you just wanna buy something and never buy anything again, but know that it'll probably be out of style later, then that's great. But my opinion is furniture, I love Wayfair. This isn't sponsored by them, but I order most of my furniture from there and I feel like my home is just really in style. The pieces are great. Maybe in 50 years, I won't have it and that's okay. Diffusers, oh my goodness, there are so many opinions about diffusers and essential oils. I personally love Young Living essential oils. Oh my God, there's, there's a lot of opinions about Young Living too. I really like essential oils. Young Living has been my favorite, um, but whatever. That does not matter. Whatever you think is fine. But when it comes to diffusers, I've had many. Um, this is a Young Living one. I, I do really like it. I think it works great. I think it's only a good deal if you actually order Young Living oils with it. If you're just gonna order this by itself, eh, I don't know if it's worth it. Um, I also have this one. This is from Nordstrom. I love this. The price is great. It's so solid. It just, it looks really pretty. I really like it. This, this is my newest one and it probably honestly is my favorite. And let me tell you why. The price, I can't remember. It's not super cheap, but the thing is, it is so convenient because it's like an aromatic one. Is that even right? Basically it doesn't use water. And most diffusers, you have to add water and then it runs out of water and you have to constantly clean it. You have to refill it with the water. You have to put the drops in. It's like a whole process to diffuse. And I'm just lazy, let's be real. And so I would go days and weeks without diffusing because it was, I was just lazy. This on the other hand, you just screw on an essential oil bottle. This one is cedar wood. I have so many. Um, I just screw, screw it on 
and then you can set it right here to run for as long as you want and then rest for as long as you want. And you can like control the, the levels, like if you want to be really strong or you want to be really light and then you just set it and you forget it. I have this in my living room and it just like it rests and then it runs and it's just, it literally fills my house with this beautiful scent and I don't ever have to change anything. I don't have to worry about it. It's just, so nice. And as far as the sound, that's the only thing that I did want to say about it. It's definitely not silent. So I probably would not put this beside my bed, like right by my head. Um, I would hear it through the night, uh, but just regularly in your house, I feel like it's totally fine. And I would say that these bottles last a few weeks before you have to like change it out. And I just kind of like rotate through my oils collection and it's just the best. So anyway, my whole point though, is you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars on a freaking diffuser. All right, so we're getting into fashion and style. Finally, my favorite topics. Okay, starting with Chloe. Good old Chloe designer bag. This is the Chloe Tess Hobo shoulder bag. Basically my point is even though something might have amazing reviews or it might be on sale, this was on sale, uh, don't buy it unless you absolutely really love it uh, and you've had your eye on it for years and, and or months or whatever. Uh, this had great reviews. Again, it was on sale and it was a waste of my money because it's literally just sitting there. I find that I don't, I don't ever use it. I don't personally think that it is, I mean, it's definitely a pretty bag. I think it's beautiful to look at. I don't think it's that functional because just the way you get into the bag is difficult. It doesn't hold that much at all for its size. Um, the color is really, really pretty, but my whole point is if you're gonna spend a lot of money on something designer, buy it because you want it, not because of the reviews and not because it's on sale. Now, I did just wanna mention one thing. When it comes to reviews, I am definitely one that reads a lot of reviews. I'm often purchasing things because of the best-selling reviews and then, then I share them with you sometimes. Um, but I guess when it comes to designer things that are so expensive, it's only worth it if you <laughs> love it. Not everyone else. Oh, still not done. Uh, last thing I wanna say about this is I mentioned many months ago before all of the virus thing happened that I was gonna be selling some of my designer bags on my Facebook page. So I did a few things and then everything blew up in the world and I didn't know if it was the best time. So I probably will be selling this along with some other items on my Facebook. Follow me there. It just seems like that's a great little platform that I can post pictures and descriptions and um, do it through there, so FYI. Okay, so now we're getting into some beauty products that are just loved by everyone, except me. So first we have this Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. I always hate saying that, I feel naughty. I'm sorry, I definitely recommended this years back. I feel like this was the first mascara that kind of like blew up in the world. It was like the mascara that I feel like just paved the way for these nicer brands to create good mascara that was like better than drugstore. And I definitely fell into the trap. I really did like this mascara at the time, but I have since tried so many others that now I just don't think this is worth it at all. Um, but what I do think is worth it is this Chanel mascara. And I'm sorry, I, I'm, I've repeated myself, but not everybody sees everything. This is the best mascara. I've, I really think it is. Um, this is like $35, so it's, it's like expensive, but it is so, good it is seriously so good i also wanted to mention i do have a favorite drugstore one and you guys actually recommended this to me it's the voluminous butterfly sculpt mascara which i definitely don't think it's nearly as good as the chanel one but the price point is obviously better and it is a kind of an odd applicator it's kind of like a wing shape kind of like a butterfly shape and there's not any like bristles really, um, but it, it it really gets the product on there and you can kind of create like a false lash look. But let's be real, the Chanel is still the best. So if there's ever a product uh, that people would eat me alive for saying anything negative, it would be this. It's the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. I don't know why so many people love this. Um, and don't get me wrong, I love Tarte as a brand. I have so many of their products, but this Shape Tape Concealer doesn't do it for me. I do not think it is worth the money. Um, it is so incredibly thick 
and heavy and cakey and I mean, it definitely blends, but it's just, it's almost like you're applying foundation to your face because it's just so thick. Uh, I much prefer this Born This Way Too Faced Concealer. It is just so much more natural looking, but yet it covers, it covers everything, but in a very natural, realistic way. So if you haven't tried this, give this a try. I really think you'll like it better than this. Next we have two products by the same brand. One I love and one I hate. But the one that I hate, everybody loves. It's a weird dynamic. It's the Brow Wiz. The Anastasia of Beverly Hills Brow Wiz Pencil. And it looks like this is used. It looks like, oh, I use this all the time. And I do for the brush. I literally still just keep this to brush my eyebrows. It's terrible though. I don't like it at all. I much prefer this powder and it's also by Anastasia of Beverly Hills. Look, this one, I used it so much, it's completely empty. That's a lot of brows. This is my latest one. It's a new one, but it is so good. All you do is take an angled brush and you fill in your brows. It looks so much more natural. It's so much easier. Everyone hates doing their eyebrows because it's really hard to make them look natural, but also even this, this will make it so much easier for you. And in the end, it just looks better. Uh, so highly recommend the brow powder. I feel like it doesn't get enough attention. I definitely should get more than this. So that does it for the 10 popular products that I don't really think is worth the money. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'm sorry if it seemed a bit negative. That's kind of why I don't like to bash things on my channel, um, but it is real. And if you enjoyed it, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up and then comment down below any products or items that you think are really, really hyped up, but might not be worth it. I'm, I'm honestly curious your thoughts. So thank you again. And I'll see you in one of these videos. Bye.